Hello, you are watching the Auto Advisor channel. If your car won't start, the problem can most likely be related to one of two elements of the charging system, the battery or the alternator. But how can you tell which is faulty? If you go to an auto store, they may offer you an expensive new battery without conducting any tests. Don't make this mistake. A faulty alternator can ruin a perfectly serviceable battery, putting you further away from solving the problem. However, there is no need to worry. Diagnosing car electrical problems is so simple that anyone can perform it. To do this, you need to perform the following tests. For the tests, you will need a multimeter, which you can buy at any auto parts store. Knowing what can go wrong with your alternator can save you time, money, and a lot of headaches. So let's delve into the five main causes of a faulty car alternator. Firstly, there's bearing seizure. This usually occurs as a result of natural wear and tear, or in some cases, poor quality repair of the alternator previously. Violations in the disassembly assembly of the alternator housing can lead to the bearing seizing up. Secondly, the burnout of the stator winding. This can occur due to a sudden temperature drop caused by water splashing onto the alternator, like when you're driving through puddles or washing the engine. This sudden temperature change can destroy the insulating varnish of the winding. Then, any water or other liquids that touch the alternator can act as a conductor for electric current, leading to a short circuit. Thirdly, the brush wear. The brushes of an alternator are constantly rubbing against the slip rings, experiencing frictional forces as the alternator shaft rotates. Over time, they're bound to wear out. Depending on the design of the alternator, you might be able to change the brushes separately from the expensive relay. In some cases, though, you'll need to replace the entire voltage regulator. Next, we have the failure of the regulator relay. This can happen due to natural aging or because of the failure of any other component of the alternator, like a short circuit in the stator winding diode bridge failure or even a short circuit of the battery cans. Lastly, diode bridge failure. This can be caused by a faulty battery shorting in the alternator stator winding, or even heat caused by loose tightening of connections. Understanding these causes helps you to diagnose and fix issues before they become major problems. So, keep these in mind the next time you have trouble with your car's alternator. Knowledge is power, and with this power, you're one step closer to keeping your car in top shape. Before we delve into the alternator, let's first check our battery. Yes, the battery is often the first suspect when the car won't start. The battery life is typically shorter than that of the alternator, and thus, it's usually the first place to look. Here's how you can perform a battery check safely and accurately. Step 1. Inspect the poles. Corrosion on the battery's pole pins can cause issues. To clean it, first remove the terminal from the negative pole pin, which is typically black. Then remove the terminal from the positive pole pin, which is red. Corrosion can be easily cleaned using a metal brush and a battery cleaner. For detailed instructions, refer to our Automotive Battery Corrosion Cleaner Guide. Step 2. Inspect the wires. Check the wires leading to the terminals. They should be tight, undamaged, and free of corrosion. If the terminals are badly corroded, Consider replacing them with zinc terminals to improve the electrical connection. Severely corroded wires should be trimmed and stripped before connecting to the terminals. Step 3. Check the voltage. Connect one of the multimeter probes to the negative pole pin and the other to the positive pole pin. If the voltage is less than 12.6 volts, the battery is weak and might need to be replaced. Step 4. Start the engine. Connect one of the multimeter's probes to the negative terminal and the other to the positive terminal. Have a friend start the car while you monitor the multimeter readings. If the voltage drops below 12 volts when the engine starts, the battery is weak and likely needs replacing. By following these steps, you'll be able to diagnose if the issue lies within the battery before proceeding to the alternator. This could save you a lot of time and money in the long run. Following our battery check, we now proceed to the alternator. The alternator recharges the battery while the engine is running, and any problems with it could lead to undercharging or overcharging the battery, or even a complete failure. Before we start the tests, let's do a preliminary check. 
Ensure that the drive belt is securely fitted around the alternator and spins when the engine is running. Also, inspect the wires running from the alternator to the battery for any damage, loose connections or improper installations. Now let's dive into the tests for our alternator. Step 1. Start the vehicle. Turn the ignition as you would normally do to start the engine. Step 2. Turn on the appliances. Activate all electrical appliances you can. This includes the stereo, air conditioning, heated seats, wipers and so on. Modern cars are equipped with a lot of appliances, so ensure you provide maximum load. Step 3. Check the voltage. Connect one of the multimeter probes to the negative terminal and the other to the positive terminal. The voltage reading should fall between 13 and 15 volts. If it lies outside this range, then your alternator might be defective. Step 4. Check the surface charge. After turning off the power, the voltage should be around 12.9 volts. Then it should slowly drop to 12.7 volts. This is called surface charge and is a good indication that the vehicle's alternator is doing its job effectively. By following these steps, you'll be able to diagnose if the issue lies with the alternator. This could save you from unnecessary expenses and ensure your car's alternator is in top shape. Let's take a moment to discuss a quick and easy way to test your alternator without a multimeter. This is called the light test. For this test, you'll need to find a dimly lit or dark location. This will help you to better observe the brightness of your headlights, which is crucial for this test. Step 1. Find a dark location. Try to find a place where you can clearly see the brightness of your headlights. A garage or a shaded area would work perfectly. Step 2. Start the engine and turn on the headlights. Insert and turn the key in the ignition to start your vehicle. Once the engine is running, turn on your headlights. Step 3. Turn on all electrical appliances. Activate all the electrical appliances you can. This includes the stereo, air conditioning, heated seats, wipers, etc. This step is to provide maximum load to the alternator. Step 4. Inspect the headlights. Now, observe the brightness of your headlights. If the headlights start to dim significantly or flicker when you turn on the appliances, your alternator might be failing. This is because the alternator should be able to handle the increased electrical load without affecting the brightness of the headlights. If the headlights continue to dim until the vehicle stalls, this could indicate a more serious alternator issue. Remember, this is a basic test and can't diagnose all alternator issues. However, it's a quick and handy tool to have in your arsenal when you suspect something might be wrong with your alternator. It's always recommended to follow up with a professional if you notice any issues. Let's recap what we've learned today. The alternator, the unsung hero of our vehicle's electrical system, can fall prey to a variety of issues. Bearing seizures, burnout of the stator winding, brush wear, regulator relay failure, and diode bridge failures are all possible culprits that can render your alternator faulty. If your car won't start, it's often too easy to blame the battery, but remember, an ailing alternator can quickly exhaust a perfectly healthy battery. This is why proper diagnosis is crucial. To distinguish between a battery problem and an alternator issue, you'll need to perform a few simple tests using a multimeter. These tests can save you from unnecessary expenses and the headache of repeated car troubles. Remember, understanding your car's alternator is the key to avoiding unnecessary expenses and keeping your car running smoothly. Thanks for watching.